Hi, I'm Charlie and welcome to a Chadwick Swift. That's a video aimed at a very narrow target audience but requested by patrons and subscribers. And this one's on speed profiling within train controller. Right, speed profiling. The way I look at it, oh, and I'm not an expert on this, so if you are, please leave a comment in the comment section, perhaps give us a thumbs up or whatever, because as a community, we can sort of grow this together. Now, the three set references that I use for this, the information which I've got from, is I think it's the, the Dutch gentleman, Rudy. Um, his videos are an exception. It's how I started off with Train Controller. There's the Facebook page, Train Controller Railroad Automation English Group. Loads of information there and the members are quick to respond to questions and also a YouTube channel, Model Railroad Techniques, which is run by a guy called Dazzy J, who's also uh, very reactive in helping people out who ask questions. And finally, there's obviously the train controller manual. So those are the sort of information that I've drawn in. And the job breaks down into three sort of main categories. There's preparing the track, preparing the loco and the train controller interface. Zooming along. Right, preparing the track. Take a look at what I've got here. So this is the track on which I do my speed profiling on and I've sort of indicated with this red tape where the um, actual measurement takes place, which is on this centre track. Now this track I know as SP Red 3. Speed profiling is track number three and it's my red track. And this is Red 3A red 3B and red 3C. So what happens is you plonk the loco on, train controller does its stuff and the loco goes into this section at a certain speed and comes out of this section at the same speed and train controller measures the time taken to transit this distance. And also in train controller, I have put in this distance, 3B, and also the shorter differences of 3A and 3C. So let's take a look at the train controller screen. And here are those distances. So the length is 36 inches. The run out is 26 inches, which is the shorter of the two lengths. And as I mentioned, um, there's, whoops. So as I mentioned, the start is in 3A, the center is 3B and the left is 3C but it's the middle one that does the measuring, which is that that's the length you put in there for the 36. Now it's also worth a mention that 3A, 3B and 3C are three separate blocks and they are isolated from each other on the my red rail with an insulated fish plate. Now for this little exercise, we'll be looking at putting a speed profiling my good old Hymec. Um, it's got a lock sound version for decoder in it. It's a good old, good old piece of kit, really. Um, and if you've got this far, you know that we need to talk about CVs. And the CVs are CV2, 3, 4, 5, and maybe 6. CV2 is the minimum running speed. And I will always call it V for velocity. So that is V min. CV3 is the acceleration rate. Uh, CV4 is deceleration rate. CV5 is Vmax, i.e. the maximum speed, velocity max, and CV6, if there is a CV6 on your decoder, is Vmid, as that's in the middle um, speed. So if you've got a minimum of 1 and a maximum of 100, and you wanted a straight line, a linear graph, then you'd put your Vmid to 50, sort of thing. But I don't think that some of the newer decoders don't have a, a, a CV6 that works that way. Right, so what have I got on this little one here? Well, I love spreadsheets and bits of paper. So on this Hymec here, 7026, I have um, CV minimum is, is set to a value of eight. Um, Axel and Decel, the CV3 and CV4, are set to zero, as you should do with train controller. And CV5 is set to 100, and CV6, the mid-range, is set to 50. Oh, half of 100, obviously. Right, let's show you why I have set the, C, the CV2 to a value of 8. If I turn the speed step up to value of 1, you can see how far she goes. Ah, 
and that is what I would call like a fast walking rate. The the Loco will run much slower, but within Train Controller, I don't really want Train Controller to make it go any slower. I am absolutely happy with that speed. So hence I've taken the C, the value of CV2, I think it started at 1, and put it to 8. The next thing we want to look at is the value of CV5, that's it. If I turn this on to full speed, how fast does it go? Because if it goes too fast, I need to back it off because it needs to be set at the speed that looks right for my railway, whether it's caught pulling um, a passenger service or coal trucks or whatever. But it doesn't need to go flying around at 500 mile an hour, it just needs to do a realistic HiMEC type speed. So this is the speed that I've opted for and to be honest it's probably got a scale speed of around about 50 to 60 miles an hour and to be perfectly honest it will do me just fine. So now we come to the final piece of the jigsaw and that is into the train controller interface. Now we need to be in edit mode. We've got my, the locomotive is in my red 3A and we want to double click uh, loco, bring up the window. The general tab, obviously I've put a picture in, there's the class 357026 um, and I've put the length of 8 inches. Go into connection, all sort of straightforward stuff. The speed I'm sort of predicting 60 miles an hour. For an unfitted freight, you'll probably be doing 35 to 40, but perhaps a local passenger might end up doing 60. The scale is 176, and acceleration momentum should be set. Sorry, in momentum, the acceleration deacceleration should be set to zero. Then we go into the automatic braking system. Right, now in here, we need to move this knob, and then the loco will start to move and if I use the keys and then if I press store it comes up with a figure so what we do is you want to store in here the minimum running speed of the loco that you're after so that's running too, running too fast now so what we want is something like that Press store and then run it into the other direction and press store and they're both on 8 which is ideal because it's a nice slow speed. So here's our speed profiling window and a couple of bits down the bottom here. Brake compensation I've put to zero for both forward and reverse because um, that will be sorted out later once the speed profile is complete. And I've got to be perfectly honest with you, it's a bit of a challenge. The contact spot is the distance from the end of the coupling to the first set of pickup wheels for me, which is about an inch. And that's where we go. So all I need to do now is put the loco in the right place and hit start. And off she goes into the measuring area. Now it would be fair to say this is going to take a great deal of time because as you can see the HiMEC is running across the measured centre area now and it will go up to the far end and it will come back at the same speed and it will do this numerous times until all the speeds uh, are completed and the profile is built. And now its profile speed is 26 miles an hour. And now it's 48 miles an hour. And as you can see, the graph is slowly building into its speed profile. And there we have it. And as you can see, it gives you an indication of the performance of the motor and clearly this one runs better backwards than forwards. So what does that all mean? Well I've now got the HiMEC over in the area that will become part of the branch line station and if in train controller I do a drag and drop hopefully you can hear the points changing and she'll trundle down the tracks now at the speeds that 
I've built in to the relevant blocks. I've adjusted the acceleration and deceleration um, sliders that we saw in the momentum window to keep it at a more of a reasonable rate. I've still got a little bit of work to do yet. It seems to speed up here a little bit quickly. Over the viaduct. All the points change automatically obviously with train controller. And then she goes over towards platform or become platform two. And then we have a set of buffer stops waiting for it. But hopefully it stops beautifully. Well, I hope you found that interesting. And I call it a Chadwick Swift. Nothing could have been further from the truth because in all honesty, <laughs> this 10 minutes has taken well over a day and a half to shoot because I had a problem. And the problem was this handset. This is the Digitrax DT602 handset. And you saw me using it initially. But then locomotives after locomotives started to fail the speed profile and I couldn't figure it out. And I was taking things apart, changing locos, changing handsets, and then the penny dropped. Because when I connected up my DT4, DT400, I think this is, DT400, it worked perfectly. I reconnected the 602, though didn't have a loco sele selected, failed. It wouldn't run its sequence, it kept stopping halfway through. Anyway, so what it appears to be is the, at least the DT602, maybe the other ones, has um, a communications issue, let's say, with train controller. I imagine the problem is in the firmware for the Digitrax 602 as opposed to train controller, but hopefully someone from Digitrax or someone involved will answer the question and perhaps leave it in the comment section so we can share it. I haven't been on the Digitrax forum or the train controller forums to see if, there is, if the issue has been resolved and a way forward, but if you're a Digitrax user, then clearly the 602 might not be your weapon of choice. The older 600s with their <laughs> dreadful array of buttons might just be the answer. Who knows? Anyway, so, so much for Track Chadwick Swift. Hopefully you've learned something. I certainly have, even if it wasn't ideal. But um, trying to get to grips with train controller isn't easy. And I'm a complete and utter novice. So hopefully um, if you're a, a bit of a whiz, you can leave a comment, give us a couple of links or whatever, so we as a community can move forward, learn more about this fascinating stuff and take our skill set to the next level. So there we go. The end, the end of the first Chadwick not so swift. <laughs> Um, I'll be back with another one in a couple of weeks time and if you've got an idea for me to, to sort of develop, explore and make a little video then please leave a comment and perhaps give us a thumbs up. In the meantime I'd like to thank the patrons, don't forget to subscribe in a video here and here. Catch you at the next one, take care, thanks a lot, bye bye.